every player in Korea is terrified of this man right here. His name is Quad. He's the best Cassiopeia in the world for years now. I remember being back in Korea years ago and people telling me about this guy, about his Cassiopeia. He currently has a 67% win rate. He's rank one in Korea, 1800 LP. The only next contender is Viper, best AD carry in the world, 1500. He's 250 LP behind Quad. The only mid laner in this list anywhere close is of course, Demon Chovy at rank 12 who's playing bruises. This man's Casio for years now has been feared. And finally today, we're gonna get a review of Quads Casio. Guys, you better start getting ready for the biggest gaming and esports festival in Australia. Today's video proudly sponsored by DreamHack Melbourne. Starting April 28th at the Melbourne Olympic Parks, you can immerse yourself in a world of gaming and excitement. Be ready to watch some big name amateur teams take on an all-star LCO team in a live show match and witness the LCO grand finals between Team Bliss and the Chiefs happening on stage at this event. But of course, there's going to be so much more, including live music, cosplay competitions, which I love, CSGO tournaments, a massive bring your own computer LAN, ton of gaming expo boosts, and much more. And the best part is you can save 50% off of all your tickets at DreamHack simply by using the discount code MIDBEAST or clicking the link in the description down below. Welcome to Summoner's Rift, gentlemen, into an RE today, running the Conqueror rune page. We don't run Phase Rush anymore on Cassio. We don't need it. We stand and deliver. We get so tanky that we don't need to kite. Um, old Cassio builds, you got maybe you got a little bit squishy. Right now, you get so tanky with this setup, you stand and deliver. You let them come into you, okay? Here, we have to start. Back in the day, we used to get things like Presence of Mind, where we'd get a lot of mana in the early game. Um, on level ups and stuff like that. You run out of mana on Cassio these days, you don't have enough to get the all-in kill with Doran's Ring. You need the tier in order to lane against these top tier mids. Um, and Quad has been accused of scripting a long time ago before he played pro even. Um, they accused him of scripting on Cassiopeia because his movements were just disgusting and he never missed Qs. A lot of Cassio's, like Cassio deals the most damage in the game as long as you're landing the poison. If you miss the poison, you don't deal damage. You have to land it. That's why I like to play Cassiopeia with champions like Twitch and Teemo, who their passives, their, their poison, applies to your own poison, even Singed, um, for players that can't land a Q. As he finally does miss one. Bob moves in, puts the ward topside. We do have the Mana Flow Band Transcendence. Now, if we landed that, just goes wide. We hit level three and we move up. You don't have much room to maneuver against Quad. As look at him absolutely terrorizing that Ari. Look at the spacing. First and foremost, he has flash. He doesn't panic flash on that Ari. He moves up and knows, I deal more damage than the Ari. If I stand and deliver and dodge the charm, I win. He sees the charm coming. He doesn't panic flash. He sees it, maneuvers. Uh, yes, he's on zero ping. It does help being low ping, but we flash and get out of there. Graves hovers. We are running teleport. I always say this to the players below master tier. Don't be afraid to run something like barrier, like ignite, like ghost, that maybe is a little bit more easy to use than the teleport. Teleport is for mainly high elo players only because in the highest brackets, if you don't run TP, you'll get exposed because enemy mid laner knows how to abuse this. When you're in the lower elos, having that Nice, easy, available summoner. Much more, you know, it's not a six minute cooldown. You got a barrier on two minutes 40 or something like that. It's disgustingly low. We move in and already, I'm wondering if he pulls this wave to a freeze. And you can see why he's like 1800 LP and no mid laner can match him because every lane he plays, he plays like this very aggressively. And the fact that you're able to have this much early pressure and then outscale almost every champion, it's absurd. The W ability on Cassio, it's Miasma. It grounds champions with dashes. Also in the meta with how the meta and how the game's evolving with champions, every every new champion has dashes and all that type of silly stuff. Being able to ground team fights is extremely valuable. Pays dividends. We'll stop that base there. We do not want to, uh, uh, to allow Ari to base at all. Pump out. It's a nice little early game. Usually it's going to be a Roa into uh, a Rylize, then you finish the Seraphs, then you get very beefy. I've seen him build into things like Gargoyle Stoneplate. Um, he'll go the Randowins to pre prevent the critical strike, like things like Yasuo, Yone, high crit 80 carries. He'll put that in for the passive. Like Cassio, because she doesn't run boots, 
And yes. Hi, it's 12 minutes. You're not buying... It's 20, 37 minutes. You're not buying boots, streamer. If I hear that joke one more time when I'm streaming playing Casio, I might just end it all. In-game, of course. A nice little room from Pike. Casio Pier can't do the behind R flash. You can still R flash, but you can't do the behind one. Where you used to be able to R behind you. I remember Faker used to do it. And then you'd flash and it'd come up in front of you. Can't do that anymore. Don't try it. You can R flash though to try and catch people by surprise. Um, like right now, Azari tries to last hit the cannon minion and she's just about to turn for it. Then you R flash, catch her by surprise. That's how you do the R flash in lane. They're under the tower and you know they're going to try and auto attack the minion. That means they're going to be standing still for a millisecond. That's when you R flash and catch them. Don't just stand there and do it randomly. Do it on when they're trying to last hit minion autos. Um, things like that. Just That's just how the game should be played at the top tier level. Trying to get that. Ari is level 6 now. Remember, if we get the W, Ari can't ultimate. So if she's grounded, you could W flash on Cassio and ground her, but then you'll have that little millisecond to jump off before you are. Probably not going to. I challenge 1,000 LP players are going to be able to turn a Cassio ult. You can't just, you can't just throw Cassio ult at people above Diamond, I feel like, these days. Like, back in, back in my day... You would turn a Cassio 1v1 and she would ult and you would. And everyone would go, What the hell? That's crazy. He turned it. Nowadays, I feel like if you're above Diamond, you should be turning Cassio ults. You should be able to do an insect leasing ward hat. Like the mechanics, mechanics and play inflation over the years, it's just improved, improved, improved. At this day and age, I see Platinums doing crazy plays. It happens. Back when I first played the game, you know. I would, I don't know, flash Syndra QR and kill somebody and someone would be impressed. they go, wow, that was really cool. When re realistically, it's just a simple play. Um, as we start ramping up, note that he goes damage items. He goes things like blasting amp tomes early. He doesn't rush the catalyst. Um, don't get it twisted. You are going rower, but build the damage components first if possible because you're stacking and sitting on that tier. You have the mana and then you start looking to pressure for the all-in kills. If you are getting shit on a little bit in lane, don't, you can go, obviously, for the Catalyst. But if you go to lane that you're dominating like this, you go damage and you put pressure on with your jungler. Try and set up. By the way, T1 Gumiyushi is the Vigar in this game, if you didn't know. Um, very high elite game. And you're the rank 1 player on the server. Cassio, she's caught. Puts the W down. Puts the ult down. And she is absolutely dead. No flash earlier from the Vi gank, and she goes down. Disrespects it. And I feel like a lot of the time here, I don't know, like, I feel like a lot of the time you want to put the ward out, but, like, sometimes just going back over here and putting it is a lot safer. Because, like, sometimes I have the feeling, oh, my God, if their jungler is here and I die, because obviously you didn't see him on the map. Sometimes it's just a little bit smarter, just pause and go take the long route. But if you're the rank one player, a little bit confident, like, I'm going to put it down and issue that challenge. He dies for it. The Ari will get the shove, don't have the teleport, and we are bouncing back on the Ari. As we're going to watch a little bit of a Herald flip as Cassio makes her way back. For you are looking for the 1v2, terrible W. She will die to the Cassante. We might get a little bit of a skirmish. Quad trying to join does have flash. We don't know how to juke it out. Moves in. You land some of the karma. Great W usage there. Going to be able to force the karma flash. Graves are just missed. Otherwise, would have died. And like, you clean up one fight like this on Cassio Pier, it is GG. Would love to see some type of WQ flash onto the Ari. And a lot of people say, Drew, I pick Ari. I can't do anything. It doesn't do any damage. A lot of the time, guys... The, the, the point of picking Ari a lot of the time is not necessarily about doing a lot. It's about never dying, being so safe, and then just slowly being extremely useful in teamfights with an E and a Q, repositioning with an ult. Yes, you can carry, but like, it's better than some, what some of you guys do when you play, I don't know, Yasuo and die 12 times and not contribute to the game at all and you're always dead. Ari, you almost never die. It's very safe post 6 if you know how to lane. You're able to always look for picks and set up in teamfights. And it's just playing hundreds of games, you're slowly going to climb with the pick like Ari. Well, you don't have to do that much heavy lifting. Yes, you're not going to be able to do so much damage, but that's not the point of the pick 
you need to understand the point of the picks. If you're playing Casio, the point of the pick is 1v goddamn effing 9, and that's what you need to do. If you're on Casio and your team gets a little bit behind, you're going, oh, we're behind. You are on Casio. You need to have that dog inside of you to say, hell yeah, I'm behind. I I'm about to goddamn 1v9. I hate my teammates. I hate my life. But at least I'm going to 1v9 in a children's video game and brag about it. As a 24-year-old male in university, potentially dropping out. Potentially doesn't want to do what he wants to do in his life. Potentially only there because his parents want him to, to do university and succeed. But he hates it. He hates the degrees in. That's a little bit of a thing. Uh, as we look for the pick on the Ari, I want, there you go. That's why you pick Ari. Ults away. We're chilling. Wave clear. Tremendous. This is pretty much becoming like an Ari. <laughs> Just promoting the Ari pick. As Quad can't really get anything done. He needs the roller by. And he needs to hit two items before he starts taking over the game. Karma trying to influence. Charm doesn't land. And Quad will get the base. He'll get the roller, hopefully. And he'll TP back into lane. Do we have enough? 1100 gold. Is it 915 here for roll? What is it? Roller done, 10 minutes, 50 seconds, boom. Roller done, tier starting to stack. Now, usually you won't see him go for the Archangel second, bit of a wasted stat. The Rylai's second is higher win rate. Um, the slow on Cassio because we're not running phase rush, we don't have Ghost. We need to land this abilities and slow them. They can't move, you spam E. You just, little people with a little bit of love. And um, that E keep that that E that E button is going to get absolutely jammed, in a good way or in a bad way, in a good. Way. You can see coming through, shoving through the waves, and this is really where Cassio starts to shine. You become pretty much almost un not unkillable, but you become very beefy, very tanky, very high uh, damage output numbers, and it seems like your mana just goes on forever. Pike Q lands. Takes a kill. I would have really liked to see that to go over Quad. Varus stuck in a little bit of a pickle here. Guma. Just going to give that over to Quad, I think. Grabs it for himself. He'll head back into the mid lane. Vi Ari is a very potent pick. So running through mid lane here. You need your graves to cover. And they're going to pick up the mid lane. High elo Korean game. They're always trying to answer back here. Asante's not having the greatest of times. Three man mid. Ari looks for the pick on the Graves. Vi gonna ult in. They're gonna pick up one, but what can Quad get done? He pops the ultimate. Gonna pick up the Vi. And now he lands the Q on the. Do you see his Q accuracy on these targets? It's just what makes his Cassio the best, I think. His movements are insane. And then his skill shot accuracy. He's a good mid laner to begin with. Like, yes, he's played for Kings. I mean, he, he's played LCK, whatnot, pro play. Just his confidence on this champion and the movements. We are three and one, moving into what feels like a mid game where he is going to really excel. 1600 gold in the back. What are we going to get? We're going to get another blasting one. Amp Tome? No. He's going to go Ruby Crystal. Going to be a little bit more defensive here. Speed out of the base. And when you play a Cassio like this, you're going to end up side laning a lot. Um, that's fine. You take the 1v1s in the side lane, you press out. You're not going to split push towers, but it's more about getting the individual experience and then just looking for the 1v1s. That's the best thing about playing a champion like Cassio. You go to the side lane and you say, Who will take me? Who will take me on? You kill one and you, and, and you go, Who is there no one else? Is there no... That's what you need to be like in the Cassio in the side lane. Just letting... Just begging them to come and challenge you. And you need to damn play that. You need to look for those outplays and play them well. When you make those outplays, it feels you feel like a goddamn boss. As Karma. I'm going to put a little bit of damage out. W. E. I don't think she'll quite die, but getting that flash again is fine by me. And this blue tank, this, this this blue side squad is looking really good because this side of the map's doing well. And then Fiora against Cassante with the Sunder, it will just start to pick up as Ultimate comes down. Everfrost, Quad gets the Ultimate out, trying to kite. He flashes, holds it. Oh my God, Ari now trying to clutch. E, E. Oh yeah, that is what I'm talking about. They tried the all in. Once again, Cassio is goddamn oh, tanky. Roller is still broken, and we clutch. They can't take him down. Happy days.
How much gold are we sitting on? 1,200. We need this Rylize buy. When you play Cassio, just go to Practice Tool and understand the importance of, like, you can, as Cassio, target... Like, you can click to the left, and then you can just spam your E on your target, and your character won't stop. Your, your Cassio will keep moving, and you go E. Don't have to click again. E. Don't have to click again. Your character will move for you. It's it's weird in, in, in a sense that you don't have to keep on clicking. It doesn't interrupt. Um, it's different to, like, the auto-attack moves where you have to put another click. Go and test the little mechanics that this champion has. A lot of people I see play Cassio don't play it right. They're importing way too much that they don't have to. It's a lot. Of, it's actually slow it down, stupid. It's a little, little bit more simple than you think. Land that goddamn poison. Spam your E. Obviously, another great thing about Cassio is the Baron. You can rush Baron at 20 minutes if you set up with a really strong jungler. 2400. Like, that. what... At this stage of the game, it just feels so bad to verse Quads Cassio. Because his positioning is top tier. Doesn't miss skill shots. Sorry, I'm back. Just just get ganked by my delivery. I got a burrito. This objective control. Quad looks like he's caught here. Jimmy Yushi just utilizing the Vigard pick. Everybody running out. We don't have Flash. Not really able to help. Guma goes down. Flash over. Everybody moving over. And you see how Quad doesn't really... He, see, he says, Guma, I see what you're doing there, bro. But it's just not worth my time. It's not worth my effort. Doesn't go down for it. Doesn't matter if you're with Guma, Yushi. If they make a bad decision, don't effing follow them. Doesn't matter who they are. If you in your head know it's a bad decision, as we grind and ground the Ari... Slow on to the Vi. We look for that Q. It does land. One more Q. Pike ult misses. Let them play into you as Cassio. They overextend. They get too cocky. You may look like you're half health, but you're still 1500 health here. And any mana you consume, you're healing. I'd love to see Quad versus Bay Fang, who is now challenger on the Korean server. There is a lot of, of the Chinese super server players on the Korean server right now. We actually did a, a video the other day of Beifang. I didn't realize the 1000 LP Ezreal was in the game. I didn't realize Hand Q was in there. I wish I pointed it out. Didn't even know. He didn't tell me. He didn't message me. I thought we were friends. We're not friends. Guess we're not friends. It's Bjergsen did his farewell video today. Bjergsen was my first ever love in League of Legends. It was when I was around about silver, gold level. I started to really fanboy him and start copying his gameplay. I would watch his VODs every single day for hours and try and exactly copy it. I wouldn't try and build my own play. I would look at Bjergsen VODs in the morning. I'd go to the, the dining hall because I was staying in the dorms at university. I'd get a food at 8 a.m. Everybody was sleeping. Everyone's sleeping at 11. Everyone's drinking like me on the grind set. Get my goddamn, get my cornflakes, get my coffee, dining hall. Come back 8 a.m. Start watching Bjergs and Vods. Start playing League of Legends. Back on the old client. Oh, it was such a beautiful client. We do a little dosy do with the Ari. How you doing, honey? Sometimes they say you're the rank one player. Here you go, buddy. I wish people would do that to me, but they don't. They don't give me kills, they take my kills. Absolutely disrespectful. But Quad moves in here. He's gonna try and look to pick up the Varus. Q lands. No, it doesn't. Just missed. Looked like the hitbox landed, but it didn't. One max range Q, and maybe you can chase them down. Cassio's going through a lot of iterations in the meta. There was actually a Q max Cassio, Cassio there for a second. I didn't like playing it ever. I liked the Emax cast. It was way more fun dishing out like a goddamn machine. We have a dragon set up coming through. This dragon, the third. Enemy team. There's really not much more to be said. It just... It, it's sad to watch teams try and play out into a Cassio with two levels. 
if you're good and you're positioned well in this champion, you're going to come out with the win. It just influences team fights, in my opinion, too much. I don't know how they're going to nerf it. They've tried to nerf the items. They've tried to nerf Roa. But having no boots, and hopefully we'll see this game, having no boots on allows Quad to be able to itemize like no other champion, right? Because he gets these, he gets these three items. He gets Roa, he gets Rylize, he gets Seraph. So he gets these three items. And then he still has three more slots to build whatever he wants. And usually it's a Gargoyle or Stone Plate. He, 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 he can build Hourglass, he can build Banshees, he can build Force of Nature. He can build whatever he wants on this champion and still do ridiculous amounts of damage. As he picks up a double, looking now for the triple. Rare Q miss, now looking to land it. Should get it, max range, max range. Doesn't opt for it. Doesn't want to chase like an idiot. He wants to go straight to the Nash. Unfortunately, Cassante wants to die. And he is going to get away with that Blast Plant. And they do chase like noobs and don't go for the Nash. Look how beefy these two are. What an item. Come on, guys. Stop having fun. Play the game correctly. Yuma has looking for that dead man's plate. Oh, the stun almost hits Yuma. I love playing Vigar. Pike bot is really good because you can just leave the Vigar to fend for himself. As looks like Ari got a TP flank onto Quad. And Quad was dealing with that by himself. He'll come through for this team fight. 21 minutes in. We are spraying. Just picking up assists left, right, center. Looking for the kills. Can't quite get it. Field day here. Now, we do have TP. In a perfect world, you know, if these fights aren't happening, you're off in the side lane, bringing the Ari out, forcing ult, forcing flash, getting really large level in CS leads. This game is an absolute stomp here at this mid-game, in my opinion. Guma is 210 CS, doing so well. And you have, that, you, you have so much damage, you have so much access, this game's pretty much a wrap. I do want to see how this bad boy ends it. We have 1,800 gold. Let's see what he buys. It should be the Seraphs. Archangel, please buy it. Archangel bought. And it will be, of course, the Aegis coming through. And like this item, 30 armor, 30 magic, just 10 ability haste. We got 3.2k health, we got 3k mana. It's just the itemization of the kit at the moment is a little bit too strong. And that's definitely why Quad, best cast in the world, has been able to have a 70% win rate in Korean Challenger and steamroll to rank 1 Korea. Quad's been playing for a long time now. Cassio's never been as strong until now. Don't get it twisted. He's a great player, but he's not an 1800 LP Korean player without Cassio being in the state and the items being in the state that they are. He will just eat every jungle creep. It's not really worth it. Oh, can we steal it? Can we steal it? Can we steal it? Can we steal it? Can't. Ari flashes in. And she will just straight up. Thank you. Give a kill over to Quad as he hits level 16. At 23 minutes. Pretty much the fastest you can hit level 16. We have that roll up. I don't even want to compare gold leads. It's just been a nice, classy game from him. Do you agree? I'd love to have shown you, like, um, I mean, I don't really... I think this game's been perfect to show you guys. Sometimes, like, yeah, show a little bit of a closer game, but in reality, showing you guys the early game, the first 10, 15 minutes, and then showing you how that late game unfolds is fine with me. They'll slowly set up a siege. They'll get the Baron. They'll get the Dragons. They'll get the Soul. And in Korean Challenger, these games, 99% of the time, just get FF'd as they clutch out. Wouldn't be surprised if one comes through. Hold it. Enemy team FF's. Gentlemen, that's the VOD for today. Quad's Casio. Everybody's terrified of it. If you can get in on it and abuse it, do it. Um, they're trying to get a hold of this champion with nerfs to items. But at the end of the day, it's still strong. You can abuse it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I love you all. Thanks for the support. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.